What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Mr. Elisha26. I'm filling in for Jack this week because he was in a bike wreck. Please send your prayers up and all your healing energy out to him so that he'll be back with us next week. This is my first video here on the Brothers in Transition channel. And I got lucky and pulled the topic of what are my thoughts on the LGBT community in the media. Um... For real, my thoughts are kind of up in the air because I see the visibility as a good thing because it will begin to open and broaden people's minds who may be not really down with our lifestyle. It can provide people with a jumping point to maybe delve into self-education and which could also lead to them pretty much like, you know, changing their hearts toward our community, which I think is great because allies, they're amazing. And, you know, we really, we're really going to need more than just the LGBT community in order for us to get better rights and when it comes to legislation, especially transgender individuals. But at the same time, I kind of... I kind of feel that there is a racial bias in the media when it comes to the stories that they would like to tell. Most of the stories are about our white counterparts. Uh, you look on Tyra's show when she's talking about what is transgenderism and how do people become transgender, or how do people know they're transgender, yada, yada, yada. And all of her guests are non-people of color. Like, there aren't people of color transitioning. I don't know. And then you also have to look at the fact that there is a huge, huge, huge system of injustice when it comes to um, the queer people of color community. And I use queer just to kind of encompass us all because... There are so many of us that do not fit into the heterosexual norm. You see Cece McDonald, who is still in jail, awaiting trial for killing her attacker in self-defense. She was denied hormones for quite some time. And she's being housed in a men's prison. But people don't hear about that and don't see the injustice in her being in jail when she was being attacked and there were witnesses. You also really don't hear about the true meaning behind Pride. Like Pride was started, well, it wasn't really started, but Pride is a celebration of the Stonewall Riots, which were started by <clears throat> drag queens of color. They were tired of the police raiding and imprisoning and beating them and so they fought back but most people go to pride and don't even know that's why we celebrate they don't even realize the impact that people of color had in that movement you also look at the media as a whole which isn't just tv and magazines or newspapers anymore but it includes things like youtube facebook twitter Tumblr, all those other facets. And there is where I see the most discrimination. Uh, you can include Grindr, where you see white men who say, I'm open, I'm a nice guy, no blacks, no Latinos. Hmm. Or how about just the other day, on June 23rd, Heidi Gloom was attacked, uh, mainly because she is gay. I believe she is um, a drag queen or transgender. I'm not really sure. I didn't know too much about her before this happened. But she tweeted, and I quote, Just got jumped by two girls at Manny and Olga's. Let them wail on me because I don't hit nappy-headed niggers. Hmm. She's posting this to the media. She also went on to say, that, first of all, I'm the woman from this incident, and yeah, I gave that fat bitch AIDS. She needed, oh, excuse me, that fat black bitch AIDS. She needs to lose some pounds, 
and she had the nerve to order a burger still with her hungry ass. Secondly, she had me leaking and I bit the bitch, so I got the last laugh. Lastly, the cameraman instigated <clears throat> this whole incident, really didn't want to beat this black bitch up. But once I heard world star hip hop, I said, set the shit off. Oh, she said, I had to set shit off. So here we have people who are supposed to speak for us, who are supposed to be, you know, role models to other people. And they blatantly create a separation between the community based on race. I don't see how we can say we've made so many advances and we've come so far in this post-racial world when a community that is already being discriminated against feels the need to discriminate within itself. Um, I don't mean to point out all the bad things, but I just see the criticism of this whole thing that we're so open and there are gay people on TV shows and there are transgender people on TV shows. But we're really not that far. If you watch Glee, which I don't, but I've seen a few episodes, uh, the black guy who also is exploring maybe his transgender identity is the most stereotypical like image of what for one a black gay kid is and two what a black woman is all the neck swirling and the snapping and all this stuff why does he have to be so flamboyantly stereotypical i don't understand it like is that what white writers think black trans women are like because I know quite a few, and they don't all act like that. I also don't see very many trans men of color in the media at all. You see your Ryan Salins and your Ryan Casada and your Chaz Bono. Where, where are the trans men of color? Where are they at on these panels? We're here, but we're never asked to attend or never ask for our feedback and that really makes me wonder like how positive is it for the world to see just white LGBT people in the media and not see the people of color I mean I I really I really can't say that it's all bad and I can't say that there haven't been trans people of color or lesbian women of color, or gay men of color in the media. But most of the time, our portrayals are either that we're violent, killing people, or we're prostitutes, or that we're just these flamboyant stereotypes of what they already think people of color are like. It really kind of saddens me to a point but I just realized that we have to be more proactive about telling our stories. We cannot depend on other people to tell them for us. We need to get out there, create our own shows, create our own caucuses, create our own discussion boards, create our own conferences to get the world out, the word out. I, I mean, I live in a, in a pretty predominantly white area and I had to stop going to my trans meeting because I just really felt I couldn't connect with these people on certain levels because they have no idea what it's like to be a black man here or to be a person of color in general. And you kind of get tired of having to educate people all the time because there is no representation of us out there that is, you know, actual, actually real to our situation. Um, I really just hope that in the future, more and more people of color in our community will want to present their stories and create new stories in order to educate people. Um, I hope more channels like this one pop up. I hope more people want to write books. I hope more people want to write short stories. 
uh, memoirs, autobiographies, and the, and the like. I hope more people want to do that within the LGBT of color community because we are underrepresented and we desperately need to get our foot out there, get our foot in the door because our communities can be so, I mean, more so like against us. We need to show them who we are and show them what we're about and kind of create our own media buzz. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, and I also hope that it gave you something to think about, about how many of our stories are untold or swept under the rug and about how we have to get out there and do our own thing sometimes in order for people to take notice. Again, much love to Jack for asking me to fill in. Hope you heal up real fast. And I also hope that I did you proud with this video. Mm. It's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Not just joking. Uh, but, you know, he's a great guy. And I have pretty big shoes to fill. So, thank you. Um, until next time, whenever that might be. Much love.